The pressure significantly increased during the second half of the second year of high school. The hallway is seldom frequented during the breaks. Kim Jiaming has also entered his second half of the third year of high school. He is hardly seen hanging around Kiki Men. The pledges of an assembly of hundred days of school can clearly be heard from the classroom. Lin Jia leans on the corridor railing, sighing, Next year, this will be us. Jian Xing responded with a hum. Lin Jia turned her head, Jian Xing, are you considering joining the Hongzi department? Jian Xing asked her, What do you mean? Lin Jia explained, I heard about it, I'm unsure about the specifics, but it seems that starting from our cohort, high school seniors can make a transfer to the Hongzi department. I feel like you could have a shot if you worked hard. Jian Xing hesitated, Could anyone in our class make the transfer? Lin Jia replied, Of course. Isn't Zhu Zheng King likely to be accepted? I even suspect this plan was specifically made for him. Jian Xing responded with an O, without answering Lin Jia's previous question. March was the beginning of spring, yet the chill lingered, making the inhaled air in the high altitude areas feel cold to the nostrils. It was enough to bring tears to your eyes. Should he actually make it, Jian Xing would feel a sense of relief. Jian Xing was leaning over the railing, looking downwards. They were on the sixth floor, roughly twenty meters from the ground. Amidst the bustling square, she spotted Zhu Zheng King walking towards the staircase entrance of the academic building. Standing beside him was Chen Boyu. When Lan Yu spotted them, she cupped her hands around her mouth, shaping them into a loudspeaker and shouted, Chen Bi Hu. Chen Boyu looked up. Lan Yu stuck out her tongue and made a face at him. Zhu Zheng King also looked up. Despite the pronounced distance, Jian Xing did not lock eyes with him. It was a one-sided affair. She saw his face and the smile on his lips. It was a one-sided affair. She retained those images in her mind. It was a one-sided affair, her last plea for him to stay. In April, rain endlessly poured over He County. The path Jian Xing walked on every day was damp, and so was she. The day before the midterm exams, she finished her last medicine, and Le Cheng accompanied her to get the new medicine. After a follow-up consultation, the doctor, who picked up the test results, her brows deeply furrowed. She maintained her silence for quite a while before she removed her glasses and asked Jian Xing in a friendly tone, what happened? The disease showed no signs of improvement despite long-term medication but instead progressed into a severe condition. Jian Xing hung her eyes low, refraining from any further communication. Doctor, who smiled, not pressing Jian Xing further. She instructed the resident physician to prescribe the medication, then asked Le Cheng to collect it. Once everyone left, and the consulting room was quiet, doctor, who mentioned Ah Shen seldom shows such care for a girl. If I didn't know he just broke up, I would even suspect this naughty young man of taking advantage of a minor. Jian Xing managed a slight smile at the surprise mention of Zhang Bai Shen from doctor. Who? I'm your doctor and I'm obligated to take responsibility for you. If you have anything you find hard to share with others, you could speak to me about it, said doctor. Who? Some matters had been bottled up for too long, and she couldn't bring herself to talk about it with anyone. Jian Xing kept her gaze low, a shadow of gloominess faintly visible on her clean face. She didn't resemble a flower about to bloom. It was as though she was withering before even budding. I remember, you're in the second year of high school, aren't you? Doctor who asked, you're reaching the third year soon. Any universities in mind? Jian Xing actually answered this question. Upon hearing this, doctor, who smiled and nodded, that's great. If you have a place you're excited to go in a subject you're passionate about, then it's wonderful. Jian Xing responded with a hum. Suddenly, doctor, who giggled and asked, so do you have someone you like? Jian Xing, who was initially fidgeting with her fingernails, paused. Doctor, who understood, so you do. That young man must be exceptional, right? These are things Jian Xing had never discussed with anyone. Not even Zhang Bai Shen, despite his knowledge of it. She was merely caught off guard by Zhang Bai Shen, who carefully protected her secret afterwards. She had never voiced it before. She had planned to keep this secret for time to know. For the time spent in Hijong, for the summer wind, and for the winter snow. But once a chink appears in your emotional armor, Reason gets overwhelmed by surging emotions. Her hands were trembling slightly. After a long silence, she forced out a barely audible hum. That must be a nice feeling, being in love with him, doctor. Who commented. Ah, being a teenager. 
Liking someone is so pure and clean. You don't ask for anything. Just one glance at him makes your heart flutter. Isn't that right? Yes. Whether it was him looking her way or the other way round, her heart felt like it wasn't her own. It went up and down uncontrollably, but she was neither pure nor clean. The urge to confide her feelings vanished instantly. Jian Xing untangled her interlaced fingers, stood up, thanked Dr. Hu and said goodbye. She said that maybe it would get better after some time. If he could get back on track, perhaps that would be her salvation too. Doctor, who watched Jian Xing leave for a while before letting out a long sigh. Often, the most emotional people are those with a bitter life. In mid-April, the midterm exams commenced, and after a week, the results were published. The top scorer was Zhu Zhengqing, with a score of 693. Jian Xing scored 625, falling out of the top 50 in the grade and top 20 in the class. She failed her physics paper. During a study session in the evening, Instructor Zhou Qi had a conversation with Jian Xing. He asked her, Something's been bothering you lately? Did you not have a good time during winter break? Jian Xing replied, No. Mr. Zhou asked, Then what's going on? Everyone was asking her what was going on. Nobody asked her how she was doing. What was going on? She too wanted to know what was going on. She wanted to know how to change it all. How to truly find herself and claim her own life on her terms. How could she stop feeling guilty every single moment? How could she look at him without any awkwardness? Even if it was just a single glance. After returning to the classroom, her desk mate looked at her warily. Jian Xing smiled at him, and he immediately said, It's all right. It's just one exam. You just got to try harder in the final exam. Hearing this, Dayunian turned back instantly. Yeah, yeah, it's just one exam. I didn't do well in the previous final exam either. After all, we have the whole of the third year for revisions, added the desk mate. Jian Xing nodded, smiling at their encouragement. At the end of the study session, Lin Jia, who was worried, came to see Jian Xing. Looking at her, Lin Jia seemed to have a lot to say, but didn't know where to start. Seeing her struggle, Jian Xing couldn't help but laugh, I'm fine, really. Lin Jia held Jian Xing's arm and fawned. Jian Xing stroked her head, you're acting as if you've been wronged. Lin Jia mumbled a protest. At that moment, Chen Boyu passed by, saw them and raised an eyebrow. Wow, is this love? Lin Jia kicked him. I'm your dad. Chen Boyu scoffed, vulgar. Lin Jia turned to look at Lan Yu. Can't you do something about him? Lan Yu instantly saluted. Yes, sir. Zhu Zhengqing had been standing there the whole time. He was leaning against Chen Boyu's desk. Hearing the commotion, he couldn't help but chuckle. Chen Boyu turned to him. What are you laughing at? Su Zhengqing replied, just marveling at your good fortune. Chen Boyu chuckled a bit, then clapped Su Zhengqing's back, thanks to you man. Just as Su Zhengqing was about to shake off Chen Boyu's hand, he caught Jian Xing's eyes. The eye contact was quite unexpected. Jian Xing didn't mean to look at him, just at the time behind him. But some accidents are like that, worth remembering for a long time. Jian Xing smiled at him, then looked away. She bent her head to pack her stuff, noticed the recently distributed physics paper, but instead of slipping it into her bag, she casually tossed it into the drawer. On May 1st, a three-day holiday, Chen Yanbei invited her out on the second day. It wasn't until Jian Xing arrived that she saw Kin Jiming too. Upon seeing her, Kin Jiming was startled. What happened to you? You've lost so much weight. Who's the one taking the college entrance exam, you or me? Chen Yanbei looked even more concerned asking Jian Xing if she was feeling unwell and needed a break. Jian Xing assured her she was fine. Kin Jiming wasn't aware of Jian Xing's health issues, so he assumed that there were some family issues and suggested a break of two to three days. But Jian Xing again insisted she was fine. The three of them went to an old restaurant on Fuxing Street for big plate chicken. Coincidentally, Yi Hatong was in the neighboring private room, along with a few individuals around his age. The sight of Yi Hetang didn't make Jian Xing uncomfortable, but it brought back a suffocating feeling of restraint. She took the opportunity when Kin Jiming was greeting them to quietly move to Yi Hetong's side. Yi Hetong seemed to sense what she wanted to say and reassured her with a smile. It's alright, don't let it weigh on your mind. Jian Xing pursed her lips but still apologized, to which Yi Hetong responded with a smile. It's okay, I've forgotten about it. Besides, I'm a few years older than you and can understand your mother's emotions. 
Is that so? She didn't understand. Whether a few years later she would understand remained to be seen. But in countless sleepless nights, she thought that she might never understand. Because she couldn't accept the idea that her beloved flawless and exciting every day only had one regret, and that regret was somehow related to her. After dinner, Qin Jiaming and Chen Yanbei were about to send Jian Xing home. As it was raining, Qin Jiaming hailed a taxi and instinctively gave the driver Jian Xing's old address. When they got out of the car, Jian Xing realized what had happened. Chen Yanbei realized it too and kicked Qin Jiaming in annoyance. Qin Jiaming let out a loud cry, exaggerating, What's that for? Attempting to murder your husband? Chen Yanbei reached for Qin Jiaming's ear, and the two of them started squabbling. Jian Xing was amused and laughed. As she was laughing, she suddenly noticed someone walking into her field of vision. Her smile faded. She quickly grabbed Chen Yanbei and turned to leave. At that moment, Jian Rying shouted, Chen Yanbei. Chen Yanbei turned back to look at Jian Rying, rolling her eyes in response. Jian Rying sneered, Who are you rolling your eyes at? So, it's this bad influence on Jian Xing after all. Chen Yanbei had no interest in talking to her and simply pulled Jian Xing away. Suddenly, Jian Rying pulled Jian Xing back. Where are you going? With your pathetic midterm results, you're still shameless enough to leave. Do you think you'll have a good life with your cheating father? There's still time to make up for your poor performance now, but let me see where you cry when you fail your college entrance exam. Qin Jiming was shocked, Aunt, are you? Shut up, Jian Rying shouted. It's none of your business when I want to teach my daughter a lesson. And you, Chen Yanbei, stop involving my girl in your affairs. Chen Yanbei was livid. Are you deranged? Jian Rying yelled, Who did you say is deranged? Jian Xing suddenly found that she didn't even want to take the briefest glance at Jian Rying. She quietly told Chen Yanbei, Let's go. Jian Rying pointed at her, I dare you to leave. Chen Yanbei laughed, Yes, I dare. What will you do about it? You were eager to kick me out before, aren't you letting me leave now, what do you want? Hearing them, Qin Jiming, who was not privy to the story, looked puzzled and turned to Jian Xing for answers. Only then did he notice that Jian Xing's expression was off. Despite the chaos, she seemed aloof as if she hadn't seen anything. Qin Jiming apprehensively pulled Jian Xing, Jian Xing. Jian Xing responded with a hum, saying, It's okay. Jian Rying glared, It's okay? How much worse do you want it to get? Chen Yanbei uttered a contemptuous huh, clearly not wanting to bother with nonsense. She was about to walk away with Jian Xing when Jian Rying pulled at her hair. Chen Yanbei winced from the pain and twisted to grip Jian Rying's arm. The scene descended into chaos. Hearing the commotion, the neighbors came out to see what was going on. Chen Yanbei used to live in this neighborhood when she was in school. She was hardly ever home, and when she was, she was either in bed all day or out and about. After she moved away quietly, the neighbors didn't have much of an impression of her. But a child recognized Chen Yanbei, hiding behind an adult and shouting, The beautiful white lady. It's the beautiful white lady. Even in this tense situation, Chen Yanbei managed a laugh. She whistled at the kid, The little one still remembers me. The child, not discerning good from bad, found Chen Yanbei pretty and flashed a wide grin in response. Jian Rying was fuming at Chen Yanbei's nonchalance, especially when picturing that Jian Xing may have been influenced towards the same behavior. She pointed at Jian Xing, yelling, You come to me. Jian Xing didn't flinch. Jian Rying continued yelling, You just must be this way, right? Do you think I'm doing all of this for who? You think it's for who? Can't you be a little less selfish for once? Finally, Jian Xing reacted. She even smiled faintly before becoming emotionless again, asking Jian Rying in a soft, calm voice, Aren't you doing this for yourself? This left Jian Rying speechless. Jian Xing went on, Do you genuinely want me to study well, or do you want me to pass the exam because you couldn't back then? Have you ever cared about me? Who is the selfish one between us? Jian Xing's voice wasn't raised, nor did she show intentional provocation. She was just stating facts plainly. And that was enough, Jian Rying couldn't hold it in. She gritted her teeth and locked eyes with Jian Xing for a few seconds before suddenly slapping Jian Xing hard across the face. I'm the selfish one. It's my fault for ever giving birth to you. The slap was severe. Jian Xing's vision blurred for at least 10 seconds. When her vision started to clear again, her ears felt slightly warm. She shook her head lightly and could feel a liquid trickling from her ear. 
Soon her ear began to itch. It was blood. She instinctively reached her hand to touch the liquid. Her hand came back sticky with it. Seeing this, the smirk on Chen Yanbei's face vanished instantly. Chen Yanbei wasn't particularly conspicuous in terms of facial features. She had fair skin and a typically soft eastern face when she didn't wear makeup. But she loved heavy makeup. Dark eyeshadow often intensified her eyes, making them look deeper. Her well-defined brow bones and thick fake lashes intensified her aloof appearance. And when she flattened her lips, it would remind people of ghouls and ghosts from horror films. Staring coldly at Jian Rying, Jian Rying felt a chill run down her spine as she was stared down by this barely legal girl. She didn't want to seem weak, so she stared back and swore, What are you looking at? Not only are you a bad influence on my daughter, you drag her into your stupid antics. My daughter is studying for university. Where are you off to, flipping burgers? Not only do you not take your studies seriously, you don't even know basic social conduct. Did you not have parents to teach you manners and principles? If you don't have any, I don't mind stepping into. Mom, Jian Xing called hoarsely, interrupting her mid-sentence. Her voice wasn't loud, but many at the scene heard it. Jian Rying was taken aback, quickly realizing it was Jian Xing speaking and retorted with more conviction. Mother, what mother? You still acknowledge me as your mother? I thought you learned to deny everyone with this little wretch. The weather was rainy and their town was in the north, each gust of wind slicing like a hidden blade. Jian Xing suddenly felt a bit cold, her lips even turning a shade of purples due to the freezing weather. When she opened her mouth, her voice was even more hoarse and she said to Jian Rying, Let's stop. Jian Rying scoffed, knowing the embarrassment now. No, Jian Xing smiled and looked at Jian Rying, softly saying, You're the embarrassing one. Jian Rying was stunned. What? Jian Xing didn't repeat herself. Chen Yanbei said she said you're embarrassing. Who do you think is causing this scene? Trashing around like a tomb-bound old woman. You might be dead and buried soon enough. You ever consider Jian Xing's feelings? How would she live here? How would her studies go? Are you clear who all this is for when you use your daughter as a shield? Talking about your daughter all the time, isn't it all just to save your own face? Early love? I'm 19, how is that early? Yes, you didn't have early love, nobody wanted you. Your whole family is unwanted. Ah, you wretch. Chen's words had touched a nerve with Jian Rying. She went into a rage, wanting to strike Chen, wretch. I'll kill you today. Chen Yanbei paid her no mind easily dodging Jian Rying and pushing her off. Enraged, Jian Rying lost her footing and fell to the ground. Used to being the domineering force and believing she could control everyone, especially children like Jian Xing, Jian Rying forgot that Chen Yanbei was not her daughter, and she was not bound by any filial piety to restrain herself. Jian Rying was shocked. The others present were also stunned. After a few seconds, Jian Rying started screaming and cursing, like a shrew rolling on the ground and kicking her shoes. Jian Xing watched coldly and suddenly felt it was meaningless. What was she even contending with Jian Rying? Who could truly be themselves? She was only 16. She barely had a sense of self. Everything she had, the food, the clothes, even the breath she exhaled, none of it was hers. Wasn't it all taken from Jian Rying? None of it was hers. It was all stolen from Jian Rying. It was meaningless. At this moment, Jian Xing felt a headache coming on, probably the fever coming back. She gently tugged at Chen Yanbei's hand. Chen Yanbei quickly gripped her hand, startled by the icy stiffness of her fingers. Are you okay, Jian Xing? Jian Xing let out a bitter smile. There might be something wrong. Chen Yanbei panicked, gripping Jian Xing's hand. Are you not feeling well? Where don't you feel well? It seems that Chen Yanbei's grip was too tight, and it made Jian Xing wobbly. She suddenly felt her legs go weak, and her head became fuzzy. Unable to bear it any longer, she leaned on Chen Yanbei, burying her face in Chen Yanbei's neck. She tilted her head, the blood from her ears streamed down onto Chen Yanbei's shoulder. Chen Yanbei was frightened, shouting, Jian Xing. Jian Xing's voice was weak, but she still managed to smile. It's okay, I might just have a fever. Before she could finish her sentence, Jian Xing fainted. What do you mean, a brain tumor? How can it be a brain tumor? Our girl has always been well fed and well clothed. How could she get such a disease? Inside the doctor's office, Jian Rying was in disarray as if the sky was falling. 
She constantly badgered the doctor, repeating over and over again, Doctor, doctor, please check again. Please check carefully again. Our girl still has to go to university. How could she get this disease? Not only does she have a brain tumor, but she also has severe depression. The nerve pressure is also very serious. This is not an overnight occurrence. The child would have experienced intermittent headaches, even temporary blindness. You parents have not been attentive, the doctor, frustrated at these kinds of remedial actions, said with a grave face. Now you know she has to go to the university. Why didn't you pay attention before? Depression. Jian Rying was bewildered. What depression? She's a child. What depression? How old is she? She doesn't have any trouble in her life except studying. Why would she be depressed? The doctor was already accustomed to this kind of ignorant reaction from Jian Rying and waved his finger to signal an intern to explain to her. But Jian Rying wasn't listening. She pushed the intern aside and rushed out. Outside the door were Chen Yanbei and Qin Jiaming. Qin Jiaming was standing, and Chen Yanbei was squatting. The hospital had a no-smoking policy, so Chen Yanbei was just pretending. There was no smoke, but her eyes were still red. Jian Rying approached Chen Yanbei, but Qin Jiaming stepped in front of Chen Yanbei. He didn't politely call Jian Rying aunt anymore, instead he met her coldly. But Jian Rying had no temper to argue with him at this point. She asked Chen Yanbei with a hoarse voice, when did she become depressed? Chen Yanbei said nothing. Jian Rying started to breathe heavily and asked again, why would she be depressed? Chen Yanbei still said nothing. Tears finally filled Jian Rying's eyes. She tries to pull Chen Yanbei, pleading with her in a soft voice. Tell me, tell me. Chen Yanbei laughed. She stood up and pushed Jian Rying's hand away. She didn't cry, but her eyes were no better than Jian Rying's. She stared at Jian Rying, saying word by word, I will never tell you in this life, you might as well give up. Jian Rying screamed in despair, Why? Why? I am her mother. I am her mother. I brought her into this world. I raised her. I am the one who worked hard to support her till now. She sat on the ground, pounding the floor, pounding herself. She was asking the doctor, Chen Yanbei, the heavens and herself. But no one answered her nor could anyone answer her. Jian Xing woke up in the middle of the night. She felt like she'd never slept so long before, so long that when she opened her eyes, she felt a bit dazed and couldn't tell where she was. Just as she turned her head slightly, she felt someone holding her hand. Jian Xing looked over and saw Chen Yanbei lying at the side of the bed. Chen Yanbei's makeup was all messed up, and when she opened her eyes, they were filled with red bloodshot lines. She saw Jian Xing awake, her expression even more confused than Jian Xing. She wanted to say something, but the words wouldn't come out. All she could do was hold Jian Xing's hand, very tightly. Jian Xing whispered, It hurts. Chen Yanbei tears fell immediately, almost instantly covering her face. She blindly wiped her tears, but it didn't help, so she just let it go. As she cried blurred tears, she asked Jian Xing in a hoarse voice, Where does it hurt? Do you want me to call a doctor? Jian Xing was staring at her, suddenly feeling like she was endlessly falling. She glanced around, a vast expanse of white. It was a hospital. It was the hospital again. She struggled to sit up, Chen Yanbei stubbornly demanded, Where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? Do you have a headache? Jian Xing looked at her and asked, What happened to my head? Chen Yanbei fell silent. Jian Xing didn't press further. She just stared at Chen Yanbei's eyes, gripping her right back. Now it was Chen Yanbei's turn to feel the pain. But she didn't cry out. She just endured. Jian Xing waited a long time, but Chen Yanbei didn't speak. Not until a neuralgic pain surged in her brain did she let go of Chen Yanbei's hand. Chen Yanbei lowered her head, her tears instantly dampening Jian Xing's hand and the blanket beneath it. Jian Xing could feel the dampness between her fingers. For a moment, it felt like she was back in those few months after the year end. The entire county was damp. She released a tired sigh and closed her eyes. Chen Yanbei noticed her sighing while her tears fell heavier. She began to call Jian Xing's name over and over again, as if she was standing up for Jian Xing, or asking something on behalf of Jian Xing. Why indeed? She had finally found the direction. She was almost free. She could have a better life. It was just a tiny bit away. Jian Xing, Chen Yanbei wiped a tear, 
Her voice was nasal, it's okay, the doctor said we could go for conservative treatment first, it will slowly get better in the future. Jian Xing opened her eyes. The window curtain was not fully closed, probably to avoid the room getting too stuffy, and the window was open a little bit. The weather in May had a mild wind, quiet as the sea. Jian Xing thought of Hugo's words. It says that a person's heart can only hold a certain amount of despair, the sponge is already full of water, and even if the sea flows over it, it cannot add a drop of water to it. It's called numbness. When she stumbled upon this sentence, it was during the summer vacation. Her most numb times. Every night she felt like she was sleeping on the sea surface, unable to sink, unable to fully get ashore. The sea water lingered at her nose, in her ears, around her mouth. A shallow layer that was already sufficient to stop her from breathing. But then again, in the winter, she read Yuhua's words, perhaps you have to be thoroughly desperate once to live again. She thought that no matter how thick the snow in winter is, it will eventually disappear under the spring breeze. Then she just had to endure a bit more. She had persisted. Jian Xing was quiet, a tear fell from her eye. It was such a pity. She was still crying over her life. She closed her eyes again. Anyway, this day will no longer light up for her. On the same night, at home, Jian Ryan was staring hard and silently at the statue of Guanyin enshrined in the hall of her house. She remembered that year, the mountain was filled with the smell of incense, someone stopped her family and said that her daughter was destined to have no love. Because love would take her life. It's better to worship a Guanyin, devoutly every day, disciplining and restraining, avoiding from the source. Jian Ryan didn't believe it. But she didn't dare not to believe it either. When did she start to be afraid? When Jian Xing was very young, a neighbor praised her daughter for her small and white face, and her eyes black like grapes, and said that when she grows up, she could marry into a good family. Then, the young girl started to make friends, starting with little girls. But she was afraid. She was really afraid. She didn't allow her to make friends, neither boys nor girls. She has done everything she could. Where did she go wrong? Jian Ryang suddenly walked up to the statue of Guanyin and viciously flung it to the ground. She roared, questioning Guanyin, where did I go wrong? What more do I have to do? What else do you want me to do? La Vi Cheng staggered out of Jian Xing's room with a clean towel for Jian Xing to use the next day. He bit his cheek, suppressing his anger and asked, what are you doing? What am I doing? I want to kill someone. Jian Ryang shouted, do you know how hard it was for me to raise a daughter? La Vi Cheng didn't want to listen to these words. He turned around and went back to Jian Xing's room. He carefully organized the items Jian Xing might need. When he was about to leave, he saw Jian Ryan kneeling on the ground again, crying whilst trying to piece the broken Guanyin back together. The shards cut her hands and blood flowed all over the floor. Like someone who doesn't know pain, she was flustered trying to piece it back, but finally realizing it was impossible, she hugged the pieces whilst crying. She kept crying, just kept crying. She probably would never understand. It was her who sent that young man to her daughter's side. And it was also her who pushed her daughter into that young man's world. Because the college entrance exams were going to happen, Jian Xing finally chose conservative treatment. La Vi Cheng also returned to live at Jian Ryang's place. He stayed in the grandmother's room. Jian Ryang still went out every day to sell snacks, but would return home earlier than usual to cook dinner for Jian Xing and make her medicinal soup. In July, Jian Xing took the final exam. The day the exam ended was July 10th, also lunar June 10th. Jian Xing's birthday. This was the first time she celebrated her birthday after turning 14. She blew out the candles, ate cake. That night, Chen Yanbei wished her happy birthday. Fortunate Xing, hey he. Jian Xing is 17 now. Fortunate Xing. Jian Xing is one year from being an adult. Fortunate Xing, Jian Xing push. Jian Xing replied, Oki. Okay. Just after midnight, she updated her Q signature. Since the creation of Q, it's the first time she recorded her own life. She wrote, I'll fight to the death for my kingdom. At the end of July, the final exam results were announced. She failed physics again. Just brushing past the aspect department. In August, Jian Xing went for a psychiatric review. Her depression improved to a moderate condition. This time's intern was Zhang Bishan. Zhang Bishan congratulated her with a smile and also wished her good luck for the college entrance exam. Jian Xing smiled and replied, I will. In September, 
Jian Xing smoothly entered senior third year as school started. On the first day of school, Zhou Qi brought up the topic about joining Aspect, only one person from class one went. No one found it strange, as if he never belonged here in the first place. He just returned to where he should be. He and them just had a brief relationship. Zhu Zheng King was the last one to leave the evening study, before leaving he left eight words on the blackboard. Tall mountains and long rivers, time will tell. Someone spontaneously started to leave messages on the blackboard. To senior third year. To youth. To university. To freedom. To you and me. Jian Xing was the last to leave school after dismissal. The windows in the classroom were closed and the lights were off. Only moonlight lit up a corner of the blackboard. There lies a beautiful handwriting, as a tribute to nature. In December, the harsh winter made Jian Xing's condition worse. She began to have a headache so bad she couldn't sleep, she began to eat medicine in fistfuls. The bowl for her herbal medicine was bigger than her food bowl. Even when she opened her mouth to speak, it smelled of herbal medicine. December 31st, it was a Saturday. Entering Senior 3, the school only granted one evening self-study leave per week, this was every Saturday. But the aspiration department did not have breaks. Transition class students voluntarily made use of the classrooms for self-study. After dinner, Jian Xing dragged her somewhat heavy body around the campus. She passed the gazebo, navigated around Scholar Lake, and stood on the bridge taking in the view of where she and Zhu Zhenqing first met. The tree by the lake had already wilted, the big rock was still there, the water level had dropped, and 2011 was coming to an end. In the end, Jian Xing still went to the aspiration department. She saw a few cats eating from a fresh bowl of food at the corner, the pellets did not look like the brand from last year. Jian Xing squatted to the side watching them eat. As she was watching, her gaze drifted towards the teaching building of the aspiration department. The aspiration department was very strict and usually did not allow other students to enter. Even when passing by, she could only go this far. Him to her had truly become distant. Spring of 2012, a bout of unseasonably cold weather toppled Jian Xing. She began to self-study in the hospital. Occasionally she would go to the roof to catch a breeze. On the same floor, a little girl was hospitalized due to depression. Often she would go to the roof to watch the sunset. Jian Xing later also started to watch. But she had never seen the sunrise. One time, the little girl asked her, Don't you want to find him? Jian Xing laughed. Where to? Isn't he everywhere in the world? In the daylight. In the wind at night. In each of her heartbeats. Later, the hospital kept mentioning for a long time to the children that, it's admirable to continue studying while being sick and still make it to university. In the summer of 2012, high school graduation happened. In early July, the list of students who made it to prestigious universities from He He Zhong Zhong was hung up at the school gate. Zhu Zhenqing was on the list. He was going to the University of Aeronautics and Astronautics. At the end of August, Jian Xing received an acceptance letter from the Academy of Art in the South. From then on, they will be separated by a great distance, never to meet again. December of 2012, the whole nation was spread with rumors about the Mayan prophecy. Southern winters are damp and cold, no amount of clothes can block the wind. Jian Xing was sitting in her dorm room, listening to her roommates discussing whether to have dumplings or glutinous rice balls on the day of the apocalypse on winter solstice. Someone asked Jian Xing, Jian Xing, do you prefer dumplings or glutinous rice balls? Jian Xing replied, I'm from the north, I prefer dumplings. Wow, then let's buy both things tomorrow. How about we celebrate the end of the world in the dorm? Oh my god, it's the end of the world. How romantic. Damn, it does feel a bit romantic. Once this night passes, it will be another lifetime. Jian Xing smiled and climbed into bed to sleep. On December 21st, 2012, Jian Xing woke up from her dreams. The moment she opened her eyes, it was still dark. She got out of bed and washed up, then stood on the balcony watching the horizon gradually lighting up red. Suddenly, Jian Xing thought of the winter morning of grade one. By that hallway, where she and Zhu Zhenqing stood together, watching a sunrise together. Impulsively rationality was robbed, Jian Xing bought a high-speed train ticket with her trembling hands. Because it was too last minute, she only managed to get the one at 8.06 in the evening. At 6 in the afternoon, Jian Xing carried a bag and headed to the train station. 
The much-talked-about apocalypse probably did not affect everyone's destined journeys. Those who had to travel for work did, and those who had to strive strove. In the face of life, death seems trivial. At 7.51 in the evening, the station began ticket inspection. Jian Xing held her ticket to enter the station, boarded the car, and took her seat. She got a seat by the window, traveling for 3 hours and 17 minutes, memorizing every minute that passed by. At 11.23 in the evening, Jian Xing fought through the crowd and arrived at the station. There was no light shielding board on the platform, and you could see the moon and stars in the sky just by looking up. If there was no apocalypse, tomorrow would be a good day. Jian Xing pulled out her phone, just about to search for the route to Beihang University, when a Q message popped up on her phone. Chen Yanbei had taken a picture and was asking her where she was. Jian Xing opened the photo and realized that it was taken at her school gate. Jian Xing paused, not knowing how to respond to Chen Yanbei for the first time. The university group chat was bustling with updates, everyone saying see you in our next life. Jian Xing was standing at the bustling train station, casually clicking open the space app that was indicating new messages. The first message she scrolled to was from Zhu Zhenqing. He had shared a group photo. A girl is wearing a bunny-shaped headband, her eyes curved into moons when she smiles. She tilts her head slightly, leaning on Zhu Zhenqing's shoulder. Zhu Zhenqing was casually looking towards the camera, his expression was tender. One picture and one caption. See you in the next life. Cheers. In the dry winter of the north, a gust of wind can make one's tears well up. Someone accidentally bumped into Jian Xing's shoulder. Jian Xing didn't hold steady, and her phone fell to the ground. It was still the phone that Chen Yanbei had given her. It shattered into pieces for the second time. A staff member came over to ask, Little girl, what's wrong? Don't cry, tell me what happened. Jian Xing opened her mouth, saying through blurred vision, I think, I bought the wrong ticket. Did you get the time wrong? Jian Xing shook her head, No, it's the destination that's wrong. How could there be anything wrong with the timing? Time had been too kind to her. She stepped past the apocalypse. One lifetime became two lifetimes. In a few days, she would come of age. It is said that adulthood is another life. She loves him through three lifetimes. She will never regret it. In the summer of 2013, Jian Xing took a leave of absence and returned to the hospital. After several rounds of chemotherapy, her family started selling their house. Jian Xing wore woolen hats in the middle of the summer. Next to her, Jian Ru kept quiet while peeling an apple for her. Jian Xing turned to gaze out the clear sky through the window, then she suddenly called out, Mom. Jian Ru paused, inadvertently cutting herself with a knife. Droplets of blood spilled out, staining the apple red one drop at a time. Jian Xing didn't look back, she didn't look at Jian Ru. She had been looking at the sky all along. She said, I can go alone, don't come looking for me, I just want some peace alone. Jian Ru didn't say anything. The silence in the ward was like a wasteland long deserted. In mid-June, Jian Xing had her last round of chemotherapy. Zhang Bishan was on holiday, and just when she was about to go in for the operation, he suddenly took hold of her hand. Jian Xing silently looked at him. Zhang Bishan asked softly, Do you have anything you want to tell me? Jian Xing smiled at him and shook her head. She didn't want to bother him anymore, even for a farewell. Another summer solstice arrived. The surgical light was like the scorching sun, making people see white light before their eyes. Jian Xing couldn't tell where she was exactly, it felt like she was lying in bed, able to see the sky by turning her head. It seemed like an airplane passed overhead, leaving a faint trail. Her phone was not broken, in her contacts was a number saved under the name Flying. She picked up the phone and dialed the number. Hello? This is Zhu Zhenqing. Zhu Zhenqing, I've returned to myself. Finally, I can love you purely and simply. The wind blew. The single leaf peeking out from the window fell. Epilogue Although He County is just a small county, it is a medicine distribution center in the country and also the largest base for the production and processing of sausages and platicodon grandiflorus. With these, He County has always been the fastest developing city among all the surrounding county towns. On November 26, 2017, the North Train Station of He County officially opened. Chen Yanbei at that time could now go home without having to transfer trains through Lin City. In June 2018, Chen Yanbei went to Lucheng to celebrate the Dragon Boat Festival and then took a four-hour train ride to He County. 
Upon boarding the sun-beaten car after dragging her suitcase all the way, she finally relaxed her frowns. She looked at the driver in the car and asked, Couldn't you have walked a few steps to pick me up? Zhang Bishan, currently in a game, spared a moment to glance at Chen Yanbei's foot and retorted, It's not like you're wearing high heels, a few more steps won't kill you. Chen Yanbei, infuriated, ripped back at the inner rear-view mirror of the car, seeing that her makeup was half gone, which even aggravated her anger. I really can't stand it. And grown man just spends all day playing games and does nothing. Do your patient know that these hands are either cutting people up or playing games? Zhang Bishan won the MVP for this round of his game and put down his phone, saying, Stop being an omen outside of work hours, okay? Chen Yanbei didn't want to argue with him, she reclined and said, Drive. At the end of 2013, Le Vicheng and Zhou Zuan decided to get married. The two didn't need a wedding ceremony, they simply held a dinner for colleagues and neighbors. Zhou Zuan had a son, who in 2013, sent a sum of money to Zhou Zuan from his army pay, enabling her to buy a small unit. In 2015, Zhou Zuan had a daughter, named La Vian, with the nickname Ping Ping. Today is La Vian's third birthday, in He County, the age of three has its own significance, so Chen Yanbei hastened back. La Vian also picked a good date to be born during the summer holidays when people would have spare time. Chen Yanbei did her makeup in the car. When she arrived home, La Vian was unwrapping the doll Zhang Bishan had bought for her a while ago on the couch. Zhang Bishan had returned to work in He County Hospital upon graduation, often coming by to visit, so La Vian was very familiar with him. And come here, Zhang Bishan called her without even changing his shoes. La Vian was thrilled to hear the call, running barefoot on the floor. At the entrance, Zhang Bishan lifted La Vian up. La Vian reached out candy. Zhang Bishan replied, none. La Vian pouted, displeased, big brother is poor. Big brother doesn't work hard. No money, poor. Zhang Bishan chuckled, where did you get such a sweet tooth from? La Vian thought for a moment, confidently saying, from sister like sister, it's in the blood. What she meant was, this habit was inherent in her. Sister had a natural love for sweet food. Upon hearing this, Zhou Zuan ran out from the kitchen. Are you asking for sweets from your brother again? Later, your brother will have to pull out your teeth for you. La Vian quickly covered her mouth with her chubby hand when she heard this. Her pair of shiny big eyes blinked rapidly. Zhang Bishan smiled, leaned in, and kissed her on the face. La Vian instantly changed her expression, even making a sound of surprise. Wow. A handsome man's kiss is more powerful than candy, Zhang Bishan said. Chen Yanbei cringed when she heard this, slapped Zhang Bishan away and reached out call sister. Interestingly, La Vian and Chen Yanbei aren't particularly familiar with each other, and Chen Yanbei's persona doesn't usually play well with elderly or children, yet La Vian really likes Chen Yanbei. She cheerfully snuggled into Chen Yanbei's hug, lisping sister. Chen Yanbei also smiled. During dinner, La Vichen came back, carrying a cake in his hand. La Vian ran over to get the cake while calling out to her dad. Zhang Bishan followed behind, protecting her. Seeing Zhang Bishan, La Vicheng said, You're here. Zhang Bishan replied, Hmm. In the living room, Chen Yanbei also called out when she heard the voices, uncle. La Vicheng replied, Ah, you're back too, wasn't it troublesome? Not at all, even if I didn't come back this month, I would have to next month. Since I had nothing to do, I thought I might as well. La Vicheng responded, that's true. Halfway through the meal, La Vian started to fuss about going to sleep. Zhou Zuan, who hadn't eaten much, took the baby and went to the bedroom. At the table, Zhang Bishan was keeping La Vicheng company with a drink. La Vicheng laughed and asked, did she ask you for candy again? Zhang Bishan replied, I didn't give her any. Did she scold you for being poor? Zhang Bishan laughed, she's just like her sister, has a sharp tongue. The three people at the table laughed together. After eating, La Vicheng, a bit drunk, laid down for a nap in the guest room. Zhang Bishan and Chen Yanbei hid in the kitchen to smoke, leaving a mess of dishes in the sink, but no one was willing to clean up. After smoking a cigarette, the two silently looked at each other, both taking a step back, looking serious. Three seconds. Both reached out at the same time. Chen Yanbei had her hand open, Zhang Bishan had his in a fist. Rock, paper, scissors. Old trick. Chen Yanbei let out a hee hee and patted Zhang Bishan's shoulder. Dr. Zhang, wash them well. Even though she had assigned Zhang Bishan to do the dishes, Chen Yanbei didn't leave. She leaned on the window, looking relaxed. 
She made small talk. You're 30 now. Your parents haven't found you a match. Zhang Bishan responded, they're looking. Chen Yanbei was surprised, blind dates. Zhang Bishan hummed in confirmation while puffing on his cigarette. Chen Yanbei crossed her arms and stared at Zhang Bishan. You aren't suffering from PTSD, are you? Got cuckolded once and don't want women anymore. Zhang Bishan mumbled, get out. Chen Yanbei laughed and then fell silent. After a while, Chen Yanbei asked again, what about him? Without changing his movements, Zhang Bishan said, not very clear. Huh? Chen Yanbei responded. The next time they met was a month later. On the morning of July 22nd, Zhang Bishan and Chen Yanbei waited for the others at Le Cheng's doorstep. Le Vian ran over from the entrance of the building, holding a bouquet of flowers in her cute dress. Zhang Bishan, waiting at the door, caught her, getting a face full of flower fragrance. Le Vian revealed her milk teeth, for sister, sister likes flowers. Le Cheng walked over and touched Le Vian's head. Le Vian handed the flowers to Le Cheng for sister. Le Cheng laughed, okay, for sister. Zhang Bishan picked up Le Vian, put her on his neck, let's go, let's go see sister. When they returned, Zhang Bishan received a call from the hospital, so he couldn't go back with them and called a cab for Chen Yanbei and the others. Le Cheng, holding Le Vian, got in the car first, while Chen Yanbei gave Zhang Bishan a look. Zhang Bishan ended his call, walked over to her and asked, What's up? Chen Yanbei pulled something out of her bag. It was wrapped in a bag, rectangular and thin, and you couldn't tell what it was. Zhang Bishan asked, What is it? Chen Yanbei said, It's from her to him, you don't have to imitate his handwriting anymore. Zhang Bishan paused, frowning, imitate. Chen Yanbei said, The bookmark in that book, isn't that in his handwriting imitated by you? She knows. Zhang Bishan suddenly stiffened. It took Chen Yanbei a few seconds to react, and then she turned to look at Zhang Bishan sharply. That wasn't an imitation, Zhang Bishan said hoarsely, those were his words. A moment of silence followed. Then, both had eyes brimming with unshed tears. After a while, Chen Yanbei couldn't help but curse. Zhang Bishan turned his face away. A wind started to blow. Chen Yanbei squinted, her voice low. Is he a good guy? He's great. Good in every way? Every way. Oh, that's fine then, let's go. Chen Yanbei turned around. Zhang Bishan spoke. Are you going to take the postgraduate entrance exam? Chen Yanbei nodded. Zhang Bishan asked, What is your thesis topic? I haven't decided yet, painful youth. She joked. Zhang Bishan laughed. Wouldn't that have to be about unrequited love? Dream on, Chen Yanbei stretched. I won't let anyone benefit I plan to write about. Three years is short. Youth is long. Romantic to the point of death. Grateful to have met you. But even more fortunate to have myself. On December 1, 2019, a high-speed railway station opened in He County. From Luching to He County was just an hour away. In early 2020, an epidemic broke out in China. As a frontline health worker, Zhang Bishan went to Jiangking. In February of the same year, Chen Yanbei signed up as a volunteer. In 2021, the epidemic improved, and the new year was once again filled with laughter. Zhang Bishan was on duty on the 29th of the Lunar New Year, and only came home the morning of the 30th, only to be immediately sent by Mrs. Who to put up spring festival couplets. Zhang Bishan didn't utter a single complaint, for fear that saying more would result in another blind date. After a busy morning and eating lunch, he went to sleep just as Mrs. Who's my young friends arrived. The sons of Mrs. Who's my young friends were also forced to come and pay respects. Happy New Year, uncles and aunts. Su Zheng King took off his scarf as he walked in. Upon seeing the red scarf, Mrs. Who laughed, did you buy it yourself or was it a gift? Su Zheng King smiled, it's from a loved one. Mrs. Who skek skeked a few times, Zheng King is getting more and more handsome every year, and what he says gets nicer and nicer. Mrs. Zhu wasn't modest and chimed in, that's my son. After saying that, she looked around, where's your son? That useless kid just got off night shift and fell asleep. A few people moved to the entertainment room after Mrs. Who finished her sentence. Su Zheng King familiarly made his way upstairs, hearing a voice on the phone before he even knocked. He didn't knock and went straight in. Zhang Bishan looked over when he heard the noise, then turned back and continued talking. It wasn't until after he hung up that Zhang Bishan spoke, here to serve or sleep. Su Zheng King sat down on the bed, sure. 
Zhang Bishan glanced at him. Your complexion doesn't look quite right. Got something to celebrate? Su Zheng King smiled, just wanted to let Dr. Zhang know, keep your schedule free on July 19th. Zhang Bishan paused. Su Zheng King smiled, I'm sorry, my life journey was faster than yours. A few seconds later, Zhang Bishan also lay down on the bed, laughing, July 19th, huh? Hmm, Su Zheng King said, Lunar Calendar 10th, thought it would be a good day. Why pick such a good day? Zhang Bishan said, it's too hot. I don't know, it was her pick, thinking we could take trips both before and after, catch the summer solstice before and encounter early autumn after. Oh. Knowing that Zhang Bishan had just pulled an all-night shift, Su Zheng King didn't want to continue to bother him and stood up, I'll leave now. He had just gotten to the door when Zhang Bishan called out from behind him, hey. Hmm. Su Zheng King turned around. The boy from back then had established his career and was about to start a family soon. His life had been too smooth, as if hardship was never a part of it. Zhang Bishan had just pulled an all-nighter, and his vision was starting to blur. His thoughts were sluggish. He lay back on the bed and waved, happy new marriage, now get out. Su Zheng King laughed and cursed under his breath, then left, closing the door behind him. The room fell into silence. Now, to protect the environment, he County has prohibited the setting off of firecrackers. Without the noise, the new year felt bland. Just as Zhang Bishan was about to fall asleep, he suddenly turned over and buried his face in the blanket. July 19th, time was tight. Zhang Bishan didn't go to Lu Cheng's house. The passenger seat was filled with flowers he bought the night before. At 8 o'clock, Zhang Bishan arrived at Zhu Zheng King's house, carrying the responsibility of being one of the best men. At 8.08, .08, the groom's motorcade headed for the bride's home. Expectedly, they were blocked at the door. Everyone laughed and joked, gave red envelopes, sang songs, and did push-ups. The door opened, and the bride was in her phoenix crown and wedding dress, her lips red, her eyes black. The bridesmaids wreaked havoc, filling the room with joyous laughs and causing everyone to be teary-eyed. The hotel was booked, and wedding photos were displayed at the entrance. Guests arrived one after another, and all the red envelopes were handed to the old man taking notes at the entrance. When Zhang Bishan passed by, the old man beckoned him to help write a few strokes. Zhang Bishan agreed happily, after leaving, his pocket felt a bit lighter. On the wedding day, the busiest were actually the bride and groom, romance and elegance were merely for the pictures and videos. The bride was so busy she had no time to breathe, her smile was stiff, she had hardly eaten anything and was so hungry she could not move. The bridesmaid said, you should eat something. The bride said, or I will go see my grandpa first. Has he sat down? He has been writing calligraphy for a long time, hasn't he? The bridesmaid said, I will go look for him. At the entrance, grandpa was tidying up the large red paper filled with names that when laid out was the size of a table. For the sake of good luck, the paper, which was over 10 meters in length and width, was not torn. It was a hassle to put it away. Seeing this, the bridesmaid quickly called for help. When she bent down to lift the box of red envelopes, she noticed an old red envelope in the corner. Merely by its color and style, it seemed out of place. She curiously picked it up and looked at the back, her face changed slightly, and she quietly put the red envelope away. After dealing with this, the bridesmaid went to find the bride. The bride was still smiling. Turning around, she saw the subtly expression on the bridesmaid's face and asked, What's the matter? The bridesmaid leaned over and whispered, Does he know about your wedding? The bride was stunned for a moment before understanding who he referred to, she said. I don't know, I didn't invite him, he's been pursuing me for so many years, it would be too hurtful to invite him to my wedding. Well, take a look at this, the bridesmaid handed the bride the red envelope, these words, aren't they a quote from his school? The bride took it and flipped it over casually. Eight words were written on the back of the red envelope. A journey across mountains and rivers, fortunate to have you for three lifetimes. The red envelope was oil skin with black ink. Whether it was touched or rubbed against something, the writing was slightly blurred. Against the red envelope, it showed an old and slightly yellow shadow. It gave off an air of humility and bitterness that was telling of an unrequited pursuit over many long years. The bride sighed, hey luckily you saw it first, otherwise my husband would have misunderstood. What about this? It doesn't feel like there's much money in it. Give it to the host later and have him play a game and give it to the kids. The bride passed the red envelope back to the bridesmaid. And the red envelope? Just throw it, 